Immigrants are poor because they marry the wrong people. Hmm? So these people, they see where value is. Okay. And if someone tells you, let's get married, you want to think again and just, you know, figure it out. Do they want to marry you for you or they want to marry you because of what you can do for them? Okay. So it's not always about, oh, oh, I got someone he wants to marry. Don't, don't get overexcited. Take a minute and think about it because really the person you choose to live your life with is the person who will either take you up or drag you down with them. So you have to be very careful before you see it. Hello everybody and welcome back to Accord TV. If we are meeting for the very first time, it's your mama Accord and yes, yes, yes. I am the immigration queen. Please remember to like the video, subscribe the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. Now in today's video, my sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, we're talking about why African immigrants are actually very poor. Like they are poor. They are crawling on their knees. No, it's not funny. I, no, it's not funny. So the thing is, if you land in this country, hmm, you stay just for a little bit and then banks and financial institutions will start noticing that hey, there's someone over here. Okay. And so we're excited at everything. Before you know it, banks will start sending you credit cards, offers. Every bank will just be sending you. All these financial institutions will just... Every time you wake up in the morning, there's a new credit card. Like, please take it. Accept it now. You'll have all this. Like, these things... They are everywhere. They're everywhere. This one is not even open because they send them all the time. They send them all the time. All the time. Please, please, please take, take. Okay. Every single day, before you know it, you're accepting the first one. And these things, they work so automatically. Once, as soon as you accept, within a few seconds already, the card is on its way. Then you have credit card number one. You have credit card number two. You're collecting credit cards. And now you are spending money. And some banks will even end up sending you unlimited credit card. There's a bank which sent me unlimited credit card. I think it was like a month ago. I'm asking myself, what did I do? Why? Why is this bank trying to drown me? Like, why would you offer me an unlimited credit card? Hmm? That basically means that I can go and spend whatever amount I want. And then what? You come, now you'll, you'll come for my neck. You want your money back. So this, these are some of the things which are bringing us down as African immigrants because the amount of money these institutions will just be putting on your face. And they're so interesting, you know? And then you're coming from a place where for you to get even one credit card, you have to wait and beg and beg and then still you won't even get it. And so you move to this place and they're telling you, hey, here are the credit cards, please use, take, take, take. And then now, before you know it, you have like 20, 30, 40,000 in credit cards that you need to pay. And then now you start the journey of paying back. And the interest rate that they're going to hit you with is going to be unbelievable. And then that's where your struggles and suffering. That's when you get to see the devil in his own image or is it in her own image. Life becomes difficult. You can't make ends meet because you're paying your debt that someone else coerced you into getting. And so that is one of the things that is really bringing us down. And it's hard to control. You have to be very, very <laughs> strong not to accept those credit cards because they will knock on your door every single day. So what you do is the moment you receive one, you cut it into pieces. Me, I just collect them. They get to 10, I throw them away. Cut them into pieces. Out, 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 out. So you can only take maybe one or two that you need just to build on your credit. But then you have to be very strong to say no to all the many other credit cards that are sent your way. But some of us are weak to the offers we take them. And then we suffer in the long run. Lifestyle, living above your means, like you can't afford it, but because, because. America makes it very easy for people to acquire things. If you want to be a homeowner, you just need to put a, a small down payment. But then even with a small down payment, it means if you put something very little, then your monthly payments are going to be high but then again you need to do your homework because especially if it's a brand new house the moment you buy a brand new house of course you'll be paying the interest for that first month the interest you'll be paying with will, will be on the land and then after the first year the second year now the interest will be uh, for the land and for you know land and the house all together it can get really really expensive you can easily move from 2000 of monthly payments to $7,000 every month in mortgage payments. Every month. So you have to be very, very careful to live within your means. There's no rush. If you cannot afford a house right now, you've done your homework, you've seen what is in the market, you've seen what will be required of you. Don't go for it. Okay? Buy a car that you can afford. Although these people will come and tell you, listen, here is the car. Take it. 
okay then you take this car and then with your monthly payments you can't you have rent you have car to pay you have all this you have a lot going on and so it brings us down the fact that you want to be, live beyond your means so that you look like hey you're in america what what are they telling you eh, life is happening but then you, you suffer there's no point hmm? you suffer and then you just remain poor there's no progress whatsoever it doesn't make sense if you cannot afford a brand new car go for the old one but then don't go for the two a very old car that it actually becomes more of a bad thing so go for something you know in between not too old not too not too new but just in there and it's within your affordability impulse buying in this country i am telling you the commercials are like movies i don't know how they do it but ever since i came here every time i see a commercial like i have no problem sitting and watching a whole commercial run through and after you are done watching it you want to buy you just want to buy so it gets us into the impulse buy and because we work over here and there's always some money in the account right because you are paid every two weeks every two weeks and sometimes for some organizations they pay every week so there's always some money in the bank account and so you get into impulse buying without planning really so the uh, the commercials are so nice as soon as you're done watching it you go and buy you go and buy the moment you open your phone like commercials are always on your face if it's on your phone they are so bright they are so nice to watch like uh, these people i don't know how they do it but you have to be very strong not to spend your money like you have to be very strong not to buy but because we get excited and so sometimes we even end up buying things that we don't necessarily need but we buy anyway because we don't have control we just buy impulse buying is gonna make you poor because most of the time you're buying things that you don't need taking loan why are you taking a loan do you have a reason for taking a loan and these people take loans to make investments that you take a loan without a plan and then you start paying for it how do you take a loan to build some apartment complex back in your country i know of this guy who took a huge loan to build apartments back in his home country and he took a lot of money and because he's here and he has other people managing his property back home you know people supervising the project people are stealing from him so the money he borrowed from the bank was not even enough to complete the whole you know all the apartments because they stole from him now the apartments are not complete he's left with a loan which he has to pay for every month and then plus his normal living expenses he can barely afford it this guy is currently borrowing even money for food like he's asking he's going for those uh, food stamps and all that all that all that because he took a loan to make a big investment at home i don't know whether the whole idea was to look like now he's making progress or it was just for him himself i don't know what the motivation was but really gone are the days when you want to live your life trying to impress people i have no business putting up apartments for somebody to see so that i look eh? to date no this is where i live if i'm investing i'm going to invest here with what i have if i don't have it fine i have no problem putting a small little tiny house back at home so that when i am tired and can't do it anymore i have a place to go to but taking two hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollars to put an investment back home for people to steal and then you are left poor it does not make economical sense at all now you've moved to america now you are the superstar you're everybody's savior you've taken jesus role you are now the new jesus in your family and your entire community eh because now you're in america now you're in canada now you are the it you are the it if they ask for 20 dollars wave is doing it if they ask for 100 dollars wave is doing it on a friday somebody is sitting somewhere in a club and because they know uh -uh, akut is whatever she is they just send a text message oh please can you send me some 200 dollars um they, they say it nimekuama you know in kiswahili they say it nimekuama i'm stuck i need something that you, you don't even ask that money is for what just 200 dollars what is 200 dollars you send 200 dollars next thing oh you know my grandmother her house fell down and then okay what do you guys need oh we need some assistance because the house fell down so we need to bring it back up there you are you are sending money hey next thing you know it rained and this is how we are suffering and you need uh, financial support you are sending money you have become the new jesus in your village every little money you earn you are sending to these people i mean really i have no issue supporting people but you don't support people at your own expense you need to keep something small because the same same people if something goes wrong and then you have to go back home <laughs> they will say, you went to america and wasted your time now you're here you don't have anything what do you want us to do for you there's nothing we can do for you so really family is good but again the same same family can always turn their back to you 
and that's uh, the truth. I mean, really, if you don't trust me, you just wait. You're going to see them in their true colors. You can only be as good for as long as you can provide. But the minute you stop providing, mm, the stories become too short. And before you know it, you don't even have their mobile numbers. They're not reachable. If you're trying to call them, where will you find them? They're busy. Mm, you, you become irrelevant. You're not helping. So what? What do you want? It's over for you. Okay? So this thing of supporting the whole village, please take care of yourself first before you support them. We've seen people building things back home. They make so much investments and then whenever, whenever, whenever they are living abroad, they are living in small tiny rooms. All the money they are making, they are sending it back home because they are making these investments and after it's all done and said and everything, they try to go back home. They die after one or two years. So what kind of life did you live? You live, make money, work very hard, send money to people, make all these investments for someone else to come and enjoy. Why don't you just live in that big house where you are? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please, don't do it. Immigrants are poor because they marry the wrong people. Hmm? So these people, they see where value is. Okay? And if someone tells you, let's get married, you want to think again and just, you know, figure it out. Do they want to marry you for you? Or they want to marry you because of what you can do for them? Okay? So it's not always about, oh, Oh, I got someone he wants to marry. Don't, don't get overexcited. Take a minute and think about it because really, the person you choose to live your life with is the person who will either take you up or drag you down with them. So you have to be very careful before you say, I do. Some of these men outside here, they want to marry you so that you can help them pay their expenses, help them pay their mortgage, help them pay for their cards, help them pay the bills. They want to cling on you like a tick. And you're thinking, ah, my goodness, I got a white man. I got a vanilla. Hey, I'm getting married. You go for these flashy weddings until the reality dawns to you. You say, hey, who the F did I marry? You, you, you need to think twice. Getting married is not always about winning. You can get married and lose big time. So before you say, I do, mm -hmm. do your homework and figure it out before you make the decision. Or because that secret could mean happy ever after or <laughs> dead but alive ever after make your choice you make one mistake one mistake let's say for instance traffic offense you accidentally go through the red light you didn't mean to but sometimes life just happens you go through the red light or you're over speeding or something sometimes you're on the parkway i mean really let's go life is busy and whatever you're going you're so pressed on time so you add your speed you increase your speed only a little bit and then luck is not on your side that day and then you're caught by the police mm -hmm. then they give you a ticket and once you're given a ticket this thing is going to reflect in your records and so Anything that you do, wherever you go to look for a job, they will run your background check and then say, hey, so you have a, a traffic issue. Da -da -da. You have a point, we cannot give you a job. Or you have a small child, maybe you quarrel with your wife for one or two things and then your wife calls police on you. And then now it stays on your record. Eh? You're someone who beats women. And so you can't, you, you can't really find a job anywhere. And so you suffer. And these small things that people do, small, small mistakes that gets you into conflict with the system, you struggle, you can't find a job anywhere. And if you can't find a job anywhere, it means you, you're struggling, you're poor, you can't do anything. So unless you're someone who thinks out of the box and you can actually run a business, you could be at luck. But many a times, if you're looking for work, you are stuck, you can't get a job anywhere. And poverty just, poverty just tears at you in the eye. And this guy is never remorseful he bites and he bites really hard africans are indeed very poor because of the social media influence you're seeing someone driving this car today the next day they're driving this car these luxury cars i don't even know what they're called i don't know the lexus i don't know the Ferraris. i don't i don't even know the car models for me i just go for something simple Mm -hmm. Not all something simple that can take me from point A to point B. I'm not saying that you, you spend the bare minimum. <laughs> but listen, social media, people pretend to live lives that they're actually not living. Those cars you see them driving are not theirs. This is how it works. If you land in America or even in Canada, there's what they call car payments, okay? So sometimes you don't even need to put any money down. You just walk into any dealership and say, listen, I want a car. And they will ask you, which car do you want? You say, this one. And the moment you walk into that car dealership, nobody's going to let you live without a car. They will make sure that you drive out with a car, okay? Whatever car it is. So, 
you walk into that dealership, you buy your car because you saw some influencer driving this nice Porsche car. You also want a nice Porsche car. And because you're not using your common sense, you go and actually buy a car. And these people, they just go rent those cars for one day and then they come show off. And there you are. You're losing sleep because someone is, uh, someone is driving this dream car that you also must get. Hmm? You will just be poor my dear these people who come online and then oh i bought a house the next thing oh i bought a second house oh i bought this house listen <laughs> you are getting surprised because someone bought a house and bought another one and bought another one who told you who told you if you want to buy a house in america of course you'll do that down payment and some banks will even tell you because you're a first-time home owner this is what we're going to do for you People pay for mortgages all their lives. Unless you're very lucky and you're making millions and millions of dollars. But people pay for mortgages. You get your children, you die. Your children take over the mortgages. They pay, they die. <laughs> their children take over the mortgages. So please, after watching this video, don't get too excited. When you see someone saying, oh my goodness, I bought a house. They don't own those houses. They are paying for those houses through their noses. Especially those who took houses without really doing their math and they don't know how much it's gonna cost them every single month they are crying they are crying and if you buy a house in america you don't buy a house in america and rush to pay it off no 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 you buy a house in america if you're an immigrant if you're an american that's fine that's fine but if you're an Im if you are an immigrant you do not buy a house with the intention of paying it off you buy a house for business how it's done i think that is a whole new subject that i'm willing to explain or talk about in any other video so if you're interested to know hmm, these things about houses comment below and of course i'll be more than happy to explain to you how it works how you buy a house in america when, when you buy a house in america what you should do don't run pay it off but huh? because so and so has a house because so and so has a nice car they are dressing very well people don't even have clothes over here they rent them they rent them you take you go to this shopping whatever you take 10 20 30 different types of clothes you come wear them take pictures you go to different locations you take pictures and america is beautiful canada is beautiful you can take a picture outside your door and it looks like you went to a vacation somewhere somewhere and you tag that place that you like and here you are you're sitting here you're thinking oh my god the life i'm missing out on the life but listen it's a struggle it's a struggle and people are suffering and you have to be very careful by the way after if you have watched this video to this far then poverty is not your portion you're going to have a very good idea of what to do when you land because we are not being poor we are we are we are progressing <laughs> we are living in riches okay that's what we want we progress we don't want to fall into debt we don't want to be poor we want to live for better lives because they normally do it here and without forgetting you're keeping it positive vibes only and i'm so looking forward to seeing you all in the next video god bless you bye